All right, so research, it's been happening. It's still happening. But as you're researching, it may come to the point when you start to realize, wow, the facts that I've got are great, but if I just tell the reader all of these facts, it's gonna be quite boring. So you wanna think about how can you portray this information? How can you teach someone without boring them to death? So we have to think about what is a perspective? What, what does that mean? What perspective will I be taking? How is this report going to be delivered to the reader? So those are questions you ask yourself as you're finishing up your research and getting ready to um, put it all together in a writing piece. Before you get going, I want you to have open your reports note, notes document and have open your gathering grid because you may want to look back at your information. I'm going to teach you about what perspective is and give you some examples and then I'm going to be asking you to start thinking about and brainstorming some ideas for yourself. And you can do this in your report notes. Just make a section that says uh, taking a perspective. Or you can do it in your gathering grid. Whatever you feel comfortable with. All right, so a perspective. It's really a picture of employing a technique, um, especially one that is prominent. So for example, if I take the perspective of someone, I'm looking at the information and the story behind it from their eyes. Um, the example that I'm going to be showing you um, in the next lesson is going to be involved with the Underground Railroad and taking a look at the Underground Railroad, not from an out outsider, but from someone that actually experienced it. So my perspective will be something like that. But we'll get there in a minute. This is an example of a perspective, and it's taken from Predator by Bruce, Bruce Brooks, and it's an excerpt from the story. So we got to make sure that our nonfiction is better than just telling the information. Because we worked on showing all of our writers, our readers. We, so now we want to take this from our narrative unit into our nonfiction unit. You got to give your writing some oomph, some uh, little bit of power behind it. And this is one way you can do this. So this is Predator. So listen to me as I read it, and then you're going to read it silently to yourself. All right, you're a leopard, and you've been very clever, and you've cornered an 80-pound baboon with three-inch fangs and frightened him into an adrenaline-stroked frenzy of hatred. Great. Now what? Hot shot. Remember, you're supposed to be happy about this. You've worked hard to put yourself in this position. What do you do if you are the leopard? It's simple. You fake a step forward, inducing the baboon to ta make a... D a do-or-die lunge at your eyes with those fangs. Then pull back. The fangs click together a half an inch in front of your face. Before stumbling, the stumbling primate can open his mouth again, you swing with your right leg sharply from the shoulder and clout him on the side of his chest. He fl flies ten feet and lands in a tangle of broken ribs and crushed organs, and you have heave a sigh. Whew. Not what you... Ever, not that you ever doubted your superior strength or your speed or your craftiness. But all the same, those fangs, if they did get you, get your eyes. The sternest, fa sternest fact of a predator's life is this. If you're going to go around getting dangerous animals in a, into a fight for their lives, you'd better have the stuff to put them on ice. Now that's an excerpt from Pre Predator by Bruce Brooks. And if you'd like to read the whole book, you can go to the library and get it. But that right there is taking perspective. And it did so by taking the perspective and putting you in the leopard's shoes. What would you do? And make the decisions. Now, what I would like you to do now is push pause, read this to yourself, and this document can be found in your Practice New Techniques, and it's called Taking a Perspective. And then I want you to read it, read it to yourself, and then we're going to start thinking. What did you notice? What made this writing interesting? And in your report notes document, I want you to make a list of things that this writer did uh, that really brought this alive and did not put you to sleep. Because as a nonfiction writer, your goal is not to put them to sleep, it's to teach them. And if you teach them and put them to sleep, you didn't do your job. So we're going to talk about these when you come back in tomorrow from class.